Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the British Academy Games Awards. Let's take a look at all of this year's nominees. It's different this time. I have to save him. Your signet ring, there. You're ready. Thank you, Alexei. You weren't a part of that craziness today, were you? How do you expect me to get down this? I don't remember it being that bad. You know, the world could always use more heroes. Basically, he thinks we should move forward with the radiation. And it kind And now, a brief look back at the 2013 BAFTA Games Awards. And the person who now gets to call himself a BAFTA-winning actor is... Danny Wallace for Thomas is Alone! Thomas was alone. Wow. A weird first thought to have. Thanks. Uh, to BAFTA, and congrats to everyone uh, who is nominated tonight. Thank you very much. Danny was alone. Hello? So very deeply alone. Obviously not that alone. I mean, you're here. What a lonely loner. A sad, lonely, all alone, little lonely, alone man. Shut up. Oh. And angry, too. True, Danny wasn't the world's biggest presenter. He was no, say, Dara O'Brien. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you for that. Cheers. Danny took his BAFTA everywhere because he was so very alone. Don't listen to the bad man, BAFTA. Not like Dara, who was on tour in Australia to great acclaim. Why do you keep mentioning Dara? But Danny had an idea of how not to be alone. He would make new friends. Tonight. Friends like him, 
who like playing and making the very best video games in the world. Yes. Yes, I will do that. Danny was ready. He was dressed in the finest rental he could afford. It's not a rental, actually. This is my dad's. Ladies and gentlemen, he is no longer alone. Please welcome your new friend for the evening, Danny Wallace. Hello! Hello, hello, hello! Hi! Hello? Hello! Hello, everybody. Good evening, one and all, my new friends, and welcome to the 2017 British Academy Games Awards here in London and live around the world on Twitch. How are we? Are we well? <laughs> yes, are we excited? Yeah. We well, should be. It is, uh, it is an honour to be here hosting these awards. It's a bit like being a high-class male escort. I only get asked to do it when Dara O'Brien is already booked. This is one of the biggest nights in gaming. Someone outside tonight, this is true, described these awards as the Oscars of the video games world. But that is offensive and wrong. Just as the Rolls Royce is very much the Rolls Royce of cars, the BAFTA Games Awards are the BAFTAs of Games Awards. Am I right? <laughs> yes, I'm right. And I know what it's like to sit there. Some of you will tonight walk away with the coveted BAFTA mask. And I've been looking into it. It was designed by Mitzi Cunliffe, who was educated in Paris and cited French influences. Suddenly seems suspiciously European, doesn't it? <laughs> so enjoy it, because thanks to Brexit, next year's trophy will be a Katie Hopkins Toby jug. <laughs> yeah and a prize fund of 12 shillings. <laughs> which, by then, will make you the richest person in Britain. <laughs> but it's been a brilliant year in a brilliant industry thanks to your ideas, your passion, your skills, your innovation, and your seemingly endless talent. And just look at everything that came out this year. There was No Man's Sky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. All that hovering over massive herds of alien creatures, giant sandworms, battling other players online. I enjoyed being promised all of those things. <laughs> Pokemon Go was the breakout hit of 2016, a huge craze. Finally, the video games world came up with a legitimate reason to be found hanging around in the bushes by the side of an A-road. <laughs> I was looking for Jigglypuffs, Your Honour. And, and, and a licky tongue. <laughs> the stunning Battlefield 1 brought us the, yes, correct, brought us the horrors of war with uh, rich detail, great sound design, and more explosions going off in your face than a Samsung Galaxy factory. <laughs> Battlefield 1 is a game in which the Germans cannot be stopped as they overrun us to enforce their terrible ideas upon us. PewDiePie gave it 10 out of 10. <laughs> split the room. I've split the room already. That's fair enough. In both games and politics, things moved fast. This is, this is generally true. On November 7th, Ubisoft sent me my promo copy of Watch Dogs 2, a futuristic tale in which hackers are destroying the very fabric of society. On November 8th, Donald Trump became president. <laughs> That game was futuristic for, like, a day. <laughs> and if we're talking futuristic, the new Mass Effect came out just the other week, didn't it? Powered by frostbite, and from the looks of things, animated by people suffering from the effects of frostbite. <laughs> As if I could do any better. The Nintendo Switch was a revolution in gaming, no matter where you were, home, work, the bus, it united everybody in asking, why is there only Zelda for this? <laughs> Why haven't they made anything other than Zelda? The, the Switch is the perfect console for you if someone says to you, would you like to play Zelda for £300? <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, Mario is coming to the Switch. For the first time, he'll be let loose in the real world, a well-meaning foreign labourer running around on our streets. <laughs> Or as Nigel Farage calls it, the problem. <laughs> you were way ahead of me on that one. 
Here, here is a good tip, though. If you want to remove this immigrant plumber from the desktop version of the game, just hold down Alt Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it works. Where are Square Enix? Where are you? Square Enix. Yes, over there. They gave us the brilliant Hitman. And over there. You've been... Is there a reason you've been separated? <laughs> What's happening there? You gave us Hitman, and I loved it. Such beautifully realised depictions of the Amalfi Coast, the breathtaking mountains of Hokkaido, the spice markets of Marrakesh. And you still made us spend most of our time hiding in bins. <laughs> we can hide in bins in the real world, Square Enix. There's, there's a bald man who reckons he's a trained killer who lives in a bottle bank near my house. <laughs> His name's Stephen. And finally, what a year for villains. M. Bison is back in the brilliant Street Fighter V. Kylo Ren in Lego Force Awakens. Delilah Copperspoon in Dishonored 2. And Batman Arkham VR brought us an all-time great enemy, the Joker. Way better than the enemy we had on the PC last year, Frame Rate. <laughs> you sort of liked it. Someone over there really hated that. <laughs> and while it is traditional to poke a little light fun, in all honesty, and I mean this, your work for a gamer like me um, has just been breathtaking this year, from the huge leaps you've made in virtual reality to genre-breaking games like Ryan Green's incredible, thoughtful That Dragon Cancer. Uh, this has been a really special year, and tonight we celebrate you. And I know you don't do it for awards, but you're here now, so you might as well have some. Shall we crack on with the BAFTA Games Awards 2017? <laughs> Let's see what the Russians have decided should win tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and you there, yes, you watching on Twitch. If while watching the show your thumbs are going through button withdrawal symptoms, you can put them to good use by tweeting along with the awards. Be part of the story at hashtag BAFTA Games. Do you agree with the winners? Do you not agree? What do you think we'll be having for dinner after? That kind of thing. So, first up is the award for artistic achievement. And our first presenter is an award-winning journalist, presenter and stand-up comedian from Go 8 Bits and one half of Scummy Mummies. Please put your hands together for Ellie Gibson. Thank you, Danny. Our nominees in the artistic achievement categories have massaged our eyeballs, sounds painful, in creating some truly stunning visual landscapes. With the advance of technology, the worlds we now play in have become greater in scale. Fortunately for us, the talent of the art teams knows no bounds. Let's take a look at this year's nominees. Artistic achievement. Abzu. Dishonored 2. Inside. The Last Guardian. <laughs> Uncharted Four. So I think that's Sam's Tower. Definitely Sam's Tower. Come on. This way. Unravel. The BAFTA for Artistic Achievement goes to... 
inside. First BAFTA. This is really cool. In 12 years. I'm sorry, I can't sing. <laughs> this is for uh, Merrick, Jeremy, Mikkel Svensson, and Tobias at home. And us also. And also, of course, us. <laughs> Everyone at home. A team from inside, everybody. So then, moving straight along, next up is the award for debut game, which celebrates a debut title released from companies in 2016. And you can tell the new developers in the room, they're the sober ones with their old teachers on speed dial, ready to ring them, just in case they weird and say, you see, this is a viable career. <laughs> so let's have a look at tonight's debut game nominees. Debut game. Firewatch. I found a little trowel. Maybe I should take it with me. Use it to pop open beers. Wow, I'm 99% sure that's for burying poop. And I'm holding it. Overcooked. <laughs> Oxen free. Oh, check out the small cemetery in the Pacific Northwest. Literally, it's from the 1800s. Jesus, I thought that was a pet cemetery. I'm kind of relieved this island's depressing enough. That dragon cancer. Virginia. The Witness. Every game, genuinely incredible. I can tell you the, the BAFTA for debut game goes to Firewatch. Wow, um, all right, um, thank you so much. This is really incredible. Uh, so like, I could thank everyone who worked on the game, um, but like, thank you guys. But um, everyone just took like a giant risk to make this game. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. People quit their jobs that were pretty good. I think you guys had great jobs. <laughs> um, and decided to make Firewatch um, with Jake Rock and myself and a team of 10. And uh, people who trusted us the most were Two guys who live in Portland who make Mac utility software. Um, I'm serious. Uh, a guy named Cable Sasser and a guy named Stephen Frank. Uh, they um, financed Firewatch and were with us every step of the way. And this debut would not exist without them. They trusted us so much that they like literally wrote themselves creatively out of the contract. They were not able to give notes. Like we sent them a build and said, "You paid for this. Hope you like it." <laughs> um, along the way. 
and they were just wonderful partners. And with trust, you can really like accomplish great things, and we could not have done it without them. So thank you so much. We get to make a second game now. Thanks. <laughs> Firewatch. So over the course of the evening, we'll be looking at each of the nominees for the uh, Best Game Award, as well as finding out what makes them special from the game's creators. And uh, first up is Firewatch. Firewatch is a first-person mystery set in the Wyoming wilderness. The year is 1989. You play as Henry, a man who has retreated from his messy life to work as a fire lookout deep in the woods. What makes Firewatch special to me is, is actually all the people who came together to make this game. It's uh, a very small team for the size of the game that we made, which I am immeasurably proud of. We all wanted to work together, we all wanted to work on Firewatch and decided to take a risk and I think that the result is really representative of all the people who came together to make the game, so whenever I play it, I see all of those people, and that is really special to me. It doesn't seem that dangerous. Whoa, whoa! Ah, oh, no! Henry! Seriously, it's completely fine in here. <sighs> Damn it. Firewatch there, the most harrowing walk in the woods since the Springwatch team <laughs> got smashed on cider and fought a load of hedgehogs. So, the award for audio achievement pays tribute to the good men and women who have subjected themselves to explosions and gunfire so realistic many of them now turn up to work in uniform. And to present this award is a voice actor whose work you will no doubt be familiar with, especially if you've played The Walking Dead or Fallout 4 or Life is Strange or Ghostbusters and, of course, one of tonight's nominated games, Firewatch, in which she plays the wonderfully enigmatic Delilah. Please, a warm welcome for Sissy Jones. <laughs> without tripping. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. Um, the award for audio achievement rewards excellence in the design and application of sound, dialogue, and music to create an exceptional audio experience. You know you've done a good job when a player does not mute any of the settings for sound effects, music, or dialogue in the options menu when they start playing the game. Here are the nominees. Audio achievement. Battlefield One. Doom. Inside. The Last Guardian. <laughs> Res Infinite. Uncharted 4. And the BAFTA for audio achievement goes to... The Last Guardian.
、えー、サウンドチームにこれをぜひ届けたいと思います。ありがとうございます。Thank you very much。<laughs> so, yeah, Ueda san would like to thank everyone involved, especially the sound team back in Japan.、Um, they did incredible work.、Uh, we had no idea that we'll pick this award up tonight, but it's such an honor. And just like to thank everyone involved. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, Tevi. Cheers. Okay, time now to reveal the winner of Evolving Game. Interesting fact in the time it's taken me to say this sentence, there have been 43 new Destiny expansion packs. That's right. This is for the best game augmented by updates following its initial release. Snappy. The games that、uh, gave us the mate we love to hate, the download update bar. So let's take a look at the nominees for Evolving Game. Evolving Game. Destiny Rise of Iron. <laughs> Elite Dangerous Horizons. Final Fantasy XIV Online. Hitman. Rocket League. Quite right. But there can be only one. The BAFTA for Evolving Game goes to. Rocket League! Wow, wow, wow.、Um, thank you so much、uh, to the Academy for recognizing Rocket League two years in a row. It's an incredible honor.、Um, to everyone back at the studio, we did it. Yeah, congratulations.、Um, thank you to our families for putting up with、uh, all the ramblings about football and cars.、Um, uh, thank you to our partners for helping us do this. And of course, thank you to the incredible community of almost 30 million gamers who've played our game.、Uh, we appreciate you. This is for you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Nice one. We love that game. So, our next award pays tribute to those tireless innovators who work hard to give us new and exciting ways to interact with technology. The past year has seen an incredible leap in VR gaming. The o Oculus Rift, uh, PlayStation VR, uh, and HTC Vive are just three of the VR headsets that I could not afford. To present the award for game design is one of the most influential men in the industry. His work on the early first person shooters Doom, Wolfenstein 3D, and of course Quake paved the way for the AAA shooters that we see today. Please welcome, well, really, gaming's original rock star, John Romero! <laughs> Thanks, Danny. 
The ability to come up with fresh concepts or technological enhancements keeps the world of video games revolving at an exciting pace. All the nominees this evening are shining examples of how thinking outside the box can produce a brilliant game that will end up inside of one. Here are the nominees for Game Innovation. Game Innovation. Batman Arkham VR. Firewatch. Uh, somebody cut the comms. What? I'm out here and the wire is cut clean through. Wait, you're already there? You're not in your tower? No, I'm not. Then who is? Pokemon Go. That Dragon Cancer. Please. Peace. He sleeps. Thank you. Unseen Diplomacy. The Witness. All right, the BAFTA for Game Innovation goes to That Dragon Cancer. Thank you all so much. Our life with Joel was hard, but it was really beautiful. And so when we thought about creating a game that would become the only legacy he would have, the legacy we chose and he could not, we created a game that was hard to play, but we believe it was beautiful. And we thank you for believing the same thing and for everyone who invests emotionally as they play our game. I just wanted to add that so much of our careers we spend um, creating, but almost out of a means to an end. And I just wanted to thank the people that allowed us to create by giving us the means to create. And um, it's executives like Julie Ehrman and Kelly Santiago who took a chance on us early on and believed that what we were creating should exist. And uh, for some, we, we represent a decades-long journey toward legitimacy, a way to be admired, respected for the potential that we all see in this medium. Um, but I just want to say, if we can use that passion, that force, to be united by supporting each other, uh, whether we're players or developers or streamers or publishers, um, we'll have already arrived at our destination because the world is starving for a unity that we can already demonstrate today. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Once again, everyone, that dragon cancer. Now, time to shine the light on another best game yeah. nominee. Let's have a closer look at Overwatch. Overwatch is a team-based shooter that takes place on Earth in the near future, where groups of soldiers, scientists, adventurers, and oddities clash for control of key locations around the world. 
the version of Earth that we tried to show in Overwatch is one that is bright and hopeful, and we hope that in some ways it serves as an inspiration as to what our planet could be and just how great it is. One of the things that we think is very special about the game is that there's a lot of diversity, not only in the gameplay and how different all of the heroes play, but also in the different representation and who the heroes are, the countries that they're from, and in general, what different walks of life they come from. Yeah. Overwatch there, which is breaking records left, right and centre, not least for most dubious fan art ever associated with a mainstream game. Uh, I've just noticed I've got lots of envelopes here that people have left. I'm going to get rid of these before La La Land wins anything. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> that would be awful. Up next, then, is the award for music, and the winner is Ed Sheeran. I'm assuming that anyway, the way things are going, but just in case it is not, who better to present this award than a Radio 1 DJ and producer always on the lookout for new music. Ladies, he is dapper. Please welcome Dev. Thanks very much, Danny. Good evening, everybody, and... Uh... The world is a uh, class games as of world class scores, and this year there have been so many soundtracks to fall in love with. A uh, compelling soundtrack immerses you, it leaves you wanting more, and it keeps you coming back. Here are our nominees Music, Abzu, Inside. Last Guardian. <laughs> Uncharted Four. There's a volcano. There's a volcano near King's Bay. Which means we need to get a move on. Virginia. I'm pretty excited about this one. You barely get my words out, so if you can tell. The winner is Virginia. Thank you very much uh, to BAFTA for nominating me and giving this award to me. Uh, I have a few people to thank. Uh, firstly, it's going to be quite cheesy, and thank my mum and dad who uh, are <laughs> in the audience tonight, actually. Um, they've supported me uh, for many years and uh, incredibly grateful for that. Um, I'd like to thank Five or Five Games for um, being, making this possible. Without them, Virginia would have never been made. Uh, 
Uh, Kieran, Matt, Stevie, Abby, Mikhail, rest of the people at Variable State, uh, I'd like to thank them. But first and foremost, la last but not least, uh, Jonathan Burroughs and Terry Kenny, who are uh, the creative directors of Virginia, made a uh, incredible work environment to uh, be creative in. And um, I thank you very much for employing me. <laughs> thank you. Moving on then, our next award is for Original Property, also known as the Sequels Prequel Award. <laughs> uh, some might argue that sequels to games have a bit of an unfair advantage as they've had more time to perfect their product, and I'm sure that's what the developers of COD, Battlefield, and FIFA are saying. Just give me one more sequel, I'm sure I can perfect this. But let's see who has been nominated for Original Property. Original Property. Firewatch. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, my typewriter is on the ground outside of my tower. You right? Yeah, look, uh, the wind? No. How the hell? You should get inside. Inside. The Last Guardian. Unravel. The Witness. And I can tell you, the BAFTA is awarded to... Inside! Thank you again. This is uh, very kind of you. Since uh, Limbo was nominated for four BAFTAs in 2010, 11, and we didn't get any, <laughs> we've had an insatiable thirst for these awards, so thank you for keeping us uh, hungry. <laughs> to the team back home. They're all trained assassins. <laughs> Every single one of them. So, our next award is for British Game. That's right, yes. Yeah. Now, Britain is a proud country. To paraphrase Theresa May, we are the red, the white, and the blue. Of course, in a year, that'll just simply mean we are simply red, white lightning, and Duncan from blue. It's all going to go wrong, but now we celebrate our best, and who better to take charge of best British game than an American? <laughs> A huge star across animation, live action and video games, from The Last of Us to Call of Duty to Uncharted to Desmond Miles in Assassin's Creed. So many games just wouldn't be the same without him. Please welcome my brother from another mother, Nolan North! <laughs> I can be British, if you like. <laughs> Not very good, but I can... Passable. 
Thank you, Danny. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this award celebrates the incredible talent here in the UK with games that are loved around the world but have that unmistakably British stamp, yeah? <laughs> I, think, I think I got half the room. <laughs> Here are the nominees for British Game. British Game. Batman Arkham VR. Forza Horizon 3. No Man's Sky. Overcooked. Planet Coaster. Virginia. This says La La Land. It's not my fault. <laughs> and the BAFTA for Brit British Game goes to Overcooked. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Okay. Wow, we are not prepared for this in the slightest, right? No, yeah. I mean, we've got. Okay. We're going to read out a really, really, really boring list for you now. I have everyone to thank. Yeah, we're not ready for this. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. I want to thank First. Uh, BAFTA, uh, all the other nominees. I want to thank my, my wife, Gemma, who's just been a massive support for the whole project. Uh, my family. Uh, Debbie and the whole of Team 17, thank mm. you so much for your support. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chris, Nick, James, Andy, you are absolutely essential yeah. in the beginning of this project. Uh, to Jaden Adam, a, a good kill. Uh, again, their music was just, just absolutely, it made the game. Yeah. Um, well, I'd like to thank Rachel, who I love. Um, I'd also uh, like to thank uh, Sean Murray and Hello Games because actually they gave us a lot of support throughout the game and they were nominated for this as well. Uh, I'd like to thank actually uh, Greg Rice and Tim Schafer because they actually did a lot for us as well at Double Fine. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Frontier um, who gave us our first jobs and were uh, hugely supportive. Uh, I'd like to thank um, friends and family that, that I haven't mentioned, which is almost certainly the case. And uh, I'd like to thank the pay players um, or obviously, because the support of the players has been absolutely essential. Um, I think it's been, uh, it's been a really strange year and, uh, in general, and for both of us, <laughs> it's been great for us to see players, uh, quite often strangers, um, playing the game together. Um, and it's been, it's been really beautiful uh, to see people come together to play a, a, a silly game about cooking. Um, so, uh, so thanks for that, and thank you, yeah. everyone. Thank you. Well done. Well, that's British game. So before we continue with the awards, here's a look at another of the BAFTA Best Game nominees. This is Inside. Inside is a side-scrolling puzzle adventure game.
hunted and alone, a boy finds himself in a surreal environment, drawn into the center of a dark dystopia project. Inside. It's like having a nightmare that you're in an episode of The Twilight Zone, but then you wake up and you're in an episode of Black Mirror, which would make a good episode of Black Mirror. <laughs> now, for the award for narrative. The games industry has always been accused of outlandish storytelling, but in a year of Brexit, Donald Trump and Leicester City winning the Premier League, Resident Evil 7's story is just like another thing you'd see on the news. <laughs> to present this award is an actor who lit up the sports world with his portrayal of the childhood friend turned rival of Alex Hunter in FIFA 17's The Journey. Please welcome Lewis Reeves. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so we are so fortunate in our industry to have some incredible writers. Those who can expertly craft a story to have us helpless with laughter at one moment and weeping in the next. A game's mechanics may be rock solid, its visuals may be spectacular. But the player will not fully engage without convincing and a compelling story. Here are the nominees for Narrative. Narrative. Dishonored 2. But someone yanked the rug from under your feet. You've lost your throne and your father. And I promise, Delilah won't just give them back. No! Firewatch. Henry, I've been at this job for 13 years, and nothing like this has ever happened before. Maybe I'm just losing my mind. I need you to feel safe out here. Well, I sure don't now. You will. Inside. <laughs> Mafia Three. Is the city surviving the war of the Union? The civil war, and God knows how many hurricanes. But when Lincoln Clay went after the mob, he inflicted more damage than all the wars and hurricanes combined. Oxen free. Why did your parents get a divorce? Just so Jonas can hear it from you. Clarissa, I don't really care why they got a divorce. Just that they had it was just issues, like any other marriage, and they just couldn't get past theirs. That's complete crap. I know you know why. Specifically why. Just come out with it. Uncharted four. Are you? Oh, oh, it's me. It's different this time. I have to save him. I don't even care about the treasure. And the BAFTA for narrative goes to Inside. <laughs> This is really weird. <laughs> I, I never write anything down, and I hate most voice acting in games, so uh, getting a narrative is really important for me. Thank you. <laughs> the poor bloke just wants to sit down. That's all he wants. Moving on to the award for multiplayer games. Now, multiplayer is very special because it's only in online multiplayer games that we truly get to meet and interact with the other members of the gaming community, which is why I no longer do it. <laughs> the, that's a joke, I'm always on there. The last 12 months have seen some fantastic indie multiplayer games, not to mention action-packed co-op modes too, so let's have a look at the nominees. Multiplayer. Battlefield 1. <laughs> Fortnite. 
Forza Horizon 3. Overcooked. Overwatch. You didn't make the cut. Titan Fall Two. Tom Clancy's The Division. But only one can take it. The BAFTA for multiplayer goes to Overwatch. <laughs> There's tape on the podium that says award here, so <laughs> just following the rules. Um, I think the only reason we stood a chance of winning this award is because we put a sassy Brit on the cover of the box, so <laughs> that, <laughs> that's something for all of you people for next year, I guess. Um, this is an incredible honor for our team. I wish my whole team could be up here with me right now. I know that they would love to be. Um, multiplayer games are a little bit tricky in this day and age of gaming because we're not always recognized as being fully legitimate. And I, I hear a lot of criticism oftentimes for a multiplayer only game. I hope that the hundreds, if not thousands of hours people are investing in all of these games that you saw, all of the brilliant nominees, um, goes to prove that multiplayer games are as important for gaming as anything else. And of course, we would not be here, we would not be recognized without the amazing players who have really become the heart and soul of the game. So thank you to all of our players and thank you again, BAFTA. A brilliant, brilliant Overwatch. Now for the award for game design. This award focuses on the games in the last year that have captivated and engaged the player. It's the nuts and bolts, if you will. And to present the award is a man responsible for, get this, one of the hits of 2016, Pokemon Go. Of course, a game that has surpassed 650 million downloads and had a bit of fun with Nintendo's stock value in the process. Please welcome founder and CEO of Niantic, it's John Hankey. Thanks, Danny. <clears throat> Gamers, as we know, are a demanding bunch. Not content with astounding graphics and evocative musical scores, you may be surprised to learn that they also want games to feel good too. Fortunately, in the industry, we have some supremely talented individuals and teams that are more than up for the challenge. A look at the releases of the past year shows that the gift for game spreads across many different platforms and genres. So these are the nominees. Game Design. Battlefield One. <laughs> Dishonored Two. The one is playing the long game. She's an empress. How many of your own subjects are you ready to slaughter? Inside. <laughs> o 
Overwatch. Titanfall 2. I will not lose another pilot. BT! Got you. Don't worry, BT. I'm not going anywhere. Look out! The Witness. Okay, all right. And the BAFTA for game design goes to Inside. Thank you. This is also for um, Ibe Carlsen back home in Copenhagen and Jeremy Petroman. Thank you. That must have been a great meeting at BAFTA. Let's give all the awards to the world's least talkative man. <laughs> he just wants to go home. Let's now take a look at the fourth game nominated for best game this evening. This is Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is a country life RPG. You've inherited your grandfather's old farm plot in Stardew Valley. Armed with hand-me-down tools and a few coins, you set out to begin your new life. I made Stardew Valley with the hopes of creating a charming, memorable and peaceful experience that was different than a lot of the other games out there. As a solo developer, I was able to achieve a cohesive vision for the game and make it very personal, which I think was important for how it turned out. Although I made the game alone, there's been an absolutely fantastic community that's formed around it, and they've taken the game so much further than I could have ever done on my own, so I'm very grateful for that. Showing that it's not just AAA titles in the running for this year's best game and showing that farming puzzle games are still as popular as when your granny first got Facebook and hadn't worked out how to turn off the push notifications. I got through it, it's fine. <laughs> now for the Ones to Watch Award. Let's all make ourselves feel much older and closer to the ends of our lives by looking at young people packed with hope and ambition. To present the BAFTA Ones to Watch Award is a member of gaming's aristocracy who was awarded an MBE for her role as co-founder of Team 17. Apparently the Queen gave her the medal for her work on worms before realising it was not a treatment for corgis. Please welcome <laughs> Debbie Bestwick. <laughs> Danny. <clears throat> the BAFTA Ones to Watch Award shortlists the three winning teams of this year's Dare to be Digital, a games design competition open to the world's leading universities run by the University of Abate. We have seen some compelling entries in previous years and this category is only getting more competitive. Here are the nominees. BAFTA Ones to Watch Award in association with Dare to be Digital. Among the Stones. <laughs> Pentagram. <laughs> Rock. 
rebound. And the BAFTA winner is Among the Stones. Wow, thank you so much. This means a lot to us. So I'm Lucas, I'm a designer, and with me here, are, here there are uh, Roberto Macken, lead artist and character designer, and Ashton Mills, who was a sound composer for us. And beside us, we also have uh, other members that unfortunately couldn't be here with us. Artists uh, Kevin McKenna and Rory Sweeney, then the programmers uh, James Wood and uh, Alberto Tayuti. And beside that, before uh, our, like long time ago, a year ago, when uh, our project was still a prototype for the university course, we had uh, programmers Sam Kamin and Stefano Mosumeci. So we would like to thank them as well so much. And we couldn't have this experience if not for Aberte University and the Dare to be Digital uh, organization. So we would like to thank them so much as well. And uh, BAFTA, of course, for uh, having us here, it means it means a lot, and the whole experience gave us so much, and we feel more equipped to enter the industry, and hopefully we can contribute to other amazing projects in a way that the best way we can. So, thank you so much. Well done. There you go. Thank you very much. Okay, nearly one tenth of the way through the evening. Moving on to the award for games designed to be enjoyed by the whole family, a magical thing, young and old, playing a game together, united by the thrill of foul language thrown at the screen and seething with bitter resentment at a silent dinner table afterwards. That is quality family time, and I don't care who disagrees. To present the award is the CEO of one of the most popular gaming YouTube, uh, YouTube uh, networks on the internet, uh, as opposed to wherever else a YouTube network might be. The, uh, the Yogscast family uh, boasts over 6 billion views and 20 million subscribers, and their merchandise is available at all good expos for a very reasonable price. Please welcome Mark Turpin. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. Uh, there is a stool on the way out, so please dig deep. Um, family games have come a long way from the time spent arguing over the less known rules of Monopoly or guessing a cryptic answer to a drunk uncle's inappropriate mimes of a movie in charades. Um, I'm, because it's a family award, I'm not allowed to do the, ants, uh, the actions, uh, but it was going to be free willy. Um, now, we have some of the best development teams in the world working to bring the joys of gaming to players of all ages. Being a family game no longer means a game that's only enjoyable for kids. Here are the nominees. Family. Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens. Overcooked. The Playroom VR. Pokemon Go. Ratchet and Clank. Oh boy. 
Okay. Toka Hair Salon, three. The BAFTA for family goes to Overcooked. We still haven't got a speech prepared, surprisingly. <laughs> Those are just silly now. <laughs> um, I guess we say thank you to all the families that have played the game and enjoyed it. Um, an apology to any of the families that we drove a wedge between. Yeah, any we destroyed. <laughs> game. Any couples we broke up. I'm sorry yeah. about those two. <laughs> yeah, just, just thank you to everyone who's played the game. Thank you so much. Thank you. you thank you very much. There you go, guys. Well done. Cheers. Excellent work. Now it's time to have a look at the fifth game nominated for Best Game this evening. This is Uncharted 4. Several years after his last adventure, retired fortune hunter Nathan Drake is forced back into the world of thieves in order to aid his long-lost brother Sam. I feel like we created an experience that really speaks to the conflict we feel as artists between following our passions and sacrifice is a big part of our lives to create something we really love and leading a normal family life. And even though it's surrounded by explosions and spectacle and gameplay and music and all this other stuff, there's like a, a heart of it that speaks to the truth that we experience as developers. This was our send off for Nathan Drake. It's a character that means so much to us that we spent years at the studio, creating and refining and living with this character for so long, it really felt like we were letting go to someone we love in a lot of ways. And I know the team poured so much of their soul into this game and to get the kind of reception we did after it came out um, was really satisfying, knowing that we all had to come together to um, honor Nathan Drake. To the PS4, what Zelda Breath of the Wild is to the Switch, the only difference being the PS4 has more than one game. <laughs> Up now, the award for Mobile Game, and to present this award is an actor known for his performances in 24 and as Abu Nazir in Homeland, and he's no stranger to the world of video games either. His portrayal of Hajj Aga in 1979 Revolution, Black Friday, a compelling account of the Iranian Revolution has earned much praise and indeed a nomination tonight. Please put your hands together for Navid Nagaban. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's such a pleasure and honor to be standing here in front of you guys. I mean, a kid from Mashhad, Iran, on the BAFTA stage. <laughs> so it's just cool. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> thank you. But I'm sure that you guys are more excited about knowing what's in this envelope. So uh, award is for the best gaming experience on any mobile device. Uh, we have come a long way. Um, I, I'm so uncomfortable with the teleprompter, I wish I would have memorized this. We have, come, <laughs> we have come a long way from early days of mobile gaming, from Snake 2 on Nokia 3310 in the early 2000s to the new Snake game on the Nokia 3310 on 2017. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So, <laughs> but whereas mobile, uh, mobile gaming was uh, once thought of as a, a distraction uh, while getting from point A to point B, uh, now it's considered an art form on itself. Um, so here are the nominees, just please. <laughs> mobile. 
Banner Saga 2. Dawn of Titans. Deus Ex Go. Pokemon Go. Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. Rains. Wow, okay. And uh, BAFTA for mobile goes to. Pokemon Go. Thank you very much. Um, it's a great honor to be recognized here amongst peers who've done such amazing, creative, and innovative work. Um, there's a few people I should thank. Uh, of course, it's a you know it's a team of people that creates this stuff. You guys all know that, but I want to acknowledge you know at least some of the folks on the team back home: um, Tatsu, Dennis, Ed, uh, Kay, uh, Masa. For all the folks out there, um, you guys made this. Um, I also want to thank uh, Mr. Awada, the late Mr. Awada uh, at Nintendo uh, for backing us and believing in this project uh, and for our colleagues at the Pokemon Company, in particular Mr. Ishihara who backed us when we left Google and for Larry back at Google for supporting what was a really crazy idea uh, back in the beginning. Um, we wanted to make games that uh, we could play with our kids that would provide some encouragement to just go outside and explore your city or your neighborhood to get some exercise and to have on with some other people in real life. And um, I want to thank everybody who played it, and thank you for recognize, uh, recognizing us here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Navid's going to be telling that uh, snake joke for years, every dinner party. <laughs> Not again, Navid, with the snake joke. The AMD Esports Audience Award demonstrates how quickly the games industry is evolving. Here to present the only award that anyone in this room will ever win that has the word sport in it <laughs> is a woman who knows the genre inside out. In her role as Vice President of European Publishing of, uh, at High res she's helped grow the popularity of Smite to such an extent that it won this very award last year. Please, a warm welcome to Veronique Lallier. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's been another fantastic year for eSports with viewing figures shattered once again. But of course with all this success, I think it's just normal that we pay a tribute to the games and the game developers. So this year the nominees have been actually shortlisted as for every other category I, I believe. Uh, by a panel of experts uh, from our industry and here are the nominees. AMD Esports Audience Award. Clash Royale. Counter-Strike. 
counter strike global offensive. We'll see if he can actually find simple. He is checking coils. He's going to be looking towards the train. And Elise rips his head off. It's on FNX now to try and trade it. But Elise with a second kill. Oh no, it's unraveling for SK. This round was a sure thing. But Dota 2. League of Legends. Street Fighter 5. Colleen wins. So, and the winner is Clash Royale. Thank you. Um, this is a, an amazing honor. Um, I think just to be nominated in the esports category was just like amazing. Clash Royale, a, a new game, a newcomer to the scene, and to be sort of seen amongst, amongst the, the esports scene is, is amazing. And um, I think I'd like to thank, on behalf of the Clash Royale development team, um, I'd like to thank our players because uh, this, is, this is for you, the audience award. Thank you. Well, so there is one final film to see before we reveal the award for best game. Here it is. This is Titanfall 2. Bigger weapons make better friends in Titanfall 2, the epic follow-up to the genre-redefining Titanfall. Titanfall 2 is a special game because it is a unique reflection of the team of small but dedicated developers that made it. Uh, everyone has uh, an ownership aspect to that game. You're seeing a reflection of all of us here at Respawn when you play it. Glad to have you back in one piece. Incorrect. I'm constructed from a multitude of machined parts. <laughs> Never change, BT. It is uh, proof that there is a lot of room to innovate for fun gameplay uh, and interesting things you can do in a first-person shooter without resorting purely to spectacle. We focused down on gameplay, and I think it really shows. Yeah. <laughs> Hunt Hall 2. Um, this is a joke written by my neighbor, Peter Stevens, uh, after seeing that. He said, looks like it's not the... Uh, I'll get it right. <laughs> he went, Danny, looks like it's not only the overfished waters around Britain where cod is threatened. Good, thank God. Well, Peter Stevens, give him his dues. It's the award for Performer next. Now, there have been many astonishing performances in video games over the past year. None have quite scaled the heights of that vintage year in 2013, but they have had a bloody good go nonetheless. We have to give them that. Winning the BAFTA for best performance in a video game is a life-changing experience because just four years later, you too could be standing here watching it be given to someone else <laughs> and powerless to stop it. To present this award is an actor on film, stage and television, fresh from her striking portrayal of the host Angela in the hit series Westworld. Please give it up for Tallulah Riley. <laughs> Thank you to BAFTA winner and all-round talented man, Danny Wallace. As I've just proved, it takes more than saying a line of dialogue to make it believable. A great performance... <laughs> yeah. 
A great performance can make or break a game. Getting the plot, the gameplay, and the universe right is only part of the battle. It is the performer's job to bring a humanity, a reality to the character that will make us connect. Here are tonight's nominees. Performer. Alex Hernandez as Lincoln Clay in Mafia 3. <laughs> Sissy Jones as Delilah in Firewatch. You think you'll take to it? Being out here? The isolation gets to people. I don't talk to the other lookouts as much as I talk to you. Not in the same way. Emily Rose as Elena Fisher in Uncharted 4. No one ever tell you that. Yeah, yeah, I may have heard that somewhere before. Navid Negaban as Haj Aga in 1979 Revolution Black Friday. My name is Asadullah Najimati. But here in Evan, they call me Haj Aga. Nolan North as Nathan Drake in Uncharted 4. And they all perish at this very table. It's incredible. It's a little bit. Troy of Baker as Sam Drake in Uncharted 4. That's cool. I this treasure that I do. Satisfied? Uh, Instead, I have uh, <laughs> kind of left with this strange feeling of. Emptiness. Yeah. And the BAFTA for performer goes to Sissy Jones for Firewatch. <laughs> me. <laughs> um, thank you, BAFTA, for this and for this amazing event that you throw every year for recognizing everything that goes into the video game industry. Thank you. Um, and to the other nominees on this list, you guys raise the bar every time you go behind the mic. And thank you for your inspiration. Um, to my husband and my babies watching from home, you're my everything. Um, I'm not going to cry because I'm an actor and we don't cry. Um, <laughs> um, the fans, you guys, this is nothing without you. Everyone at Campo who worked on this game, um, Jane, Jake, who's getting married this weekend, uh, Chris, Ollie, um, Ben, Nels, James, everyone I'm forgetting, you guys made a beautiful thing and I'm so proud to be a part of it. Um, Sean Fanneman, you have changed my life. Um, anytime you wanna put words in my mouth, you know where to find me. <laughs> um, to Rich, Summer, Henry, um, I was only ever as good as my scene partner, and working with you was a master class in acting. Thank you for your talent and your humor, um, and for making it so effortless for, for those couple of years. Um, Dean Panero, my agent, you believed in me before I believed in myself, and I love you forever. Um, uh, a voiceover community, thank you for being the best people on the planet. I am so grateful to call so many of you friends. Um, and lastly, I. I love working in video games. And one of the things I love so much is that we have the opportunity to give a voice to people who may not otherwise feel heard. Um, whether it's members of the LGBTQ community or people of different races or different religions or even a, a little boy with cancer, we have the opportunity to make their voice part of the greater narrative and we need it now more than ever. Thank you so much for this. So we've almost reached the end of the ceremony, which means that this is the big one, everyone. This is the award for best game.
Each title on the shortlist has broken away from the ordinary, either through the bold vision of a small team or a wider collaboration. And to present the award is a writer, producer who has excelled at both. Bursting onto the music scene seemingly out of nowhere in 2009, he's collaborated with the biggest names in the industry, producing hit after hit in the process. Please welcome to the stage, Naughty Boy. <laughs> Hi. Good evening. Okay. Thank you, Dan. We've seen so many amazing winners and nominees tonight. The games industry is in great shape. And it's good to see that although you have the massive AAA games, there is room for indies too. You guys keep trying to break the boundaries of what we gamers thought was possible, either with the new games, hit sequels, or brand new technology. But there can only be one. Let's not do it now. Oh, I'm not going to do it. I was just, I was, this was foreplay. I was just. Oh, good. Thank God. Because um, <laughs> I will take you down. Metaphorically speaking. But there can only be one winner of best game. And here are the nominees. Best game. Firewatch. It should be called Triple Gulch, just east of gonna pee in a bag forever flats. Oh, is that Absorka Indian? Maybe, maybe Creek? Uh, it's actually English for not in my job description. No, no! Inside. Overwatch. Star Jew Valley. Titanfall 2. He was never meant to be my Titan. Gonna make it out of his B2. Hang in there. Copy that, Ira. And I never planned to be his pilot. Uncharted 4. The BAFTA for best game goes to... It's there, I can see it, I'm just not saying it. <laughs> Uncharted 4. Oh wow, this is really unexpected uh, and quite an honor. Um, this wouldn't have been possible without the contributions of hundreds of people at Naughty Dog, uh, in particular our co-directors, Neil Druckmann and Bruce Straley, uh, the support of our co-presidents, Evan Wells and Christoph Balestra, uh, of course also to our partners at PlayStation, uh, in particular Shuhei Yoshida, Scott Rohde, and uh, Sean Layden. Without their support, we wouldn't have been able to really uh, do the final chapter of Nathan Drake's story the way that we would have wanted to. Um, That's Nolan. Oh, uh. <laughs> I wanted to have Nolan say something too. Um, the game wouldn't have been possible without this incredible cast that we put together over the years. Mm -hmm. Nolan North, uh, Emily Rose, Richard McGonagall, Troy Baker. That's who that is? Yeah. Troy Baker. <laughs> Troy. It's other. 
Great. Uh, no, I, and I just wanted to reiterate what he said. Uh, you know, these performances that we are able to do with the motion capture and over the last, what's been a decade of my life, the best decade, I can, I can guarantee you that. It's all due to the people who are way smarter and way more talented than I am. They have been amazing, and I, I, they deserve this more than anybody. So thank you from me to them. Uh, so I thank you, Nolan. Thank you. So on behalf of everyone at Naughty Dog, uh, thank you to all of our fans uh, and to the British Academy as well. Well done. Good job. A well-deserved winner capping off a great night. But we haven't quite finished yet. There is one final very special award. So special. It's called the BAFTA Special Award. <laughs> Here to present the award is a writer who has lived this industry inside and out. She's worked on titles such as Square Enix's uh, Tomb Raider, BAFTA-nominated Heavenly Sword uh, and Overlord. Please show your appreciation for Rihanna Pratchett. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's an honor to be here this evening with you all to present the special award. I was too shy to talk to her the first time I saw Brenda across a crowded GDC floor, but I was glad she was there. Being there matters, especially when you're a fledgling game developer searching for female inspiration in a male-dominated industry, searching for something, anything, that could show you that you belong there too. Brenda was that for me. And being there matters to Brenda too. You can see that in her The Mechanics is the Message series, which uses seemingly simple analog gameplay to devastating effect, conveying the horrors of transporting Jewish prisoners to concentration camps in the multi-award-winning train, or in one falls for each of us using 50,000 hand-painted pieces to represent Native Americans forced into a death march on the Trail of Tears. Brenda wants us to be there too, and the more uncomfortable it makes us feel, the better. Brenda's history of being there started at 15 after an intense love affair with D&D. She entered the games industry in 1981 and cut her teeth working on the testing and design of the Wizardry series, later moving on to games like Jagged Alliance, the Def Jam franchise, Ghost Recon, and Dungeons and Dragons Heroes. During her time in the industry, Brenda has racked up credits on impressive 47 games and thankfully shows no signs of stopping. Let's find out a little more about this incredible person. Games have always been a big part of my life. People sometimes ask me, when did I get into games? And I genuinely don't remember not being into games. I guess the earliest memory that I have of making games is when I'm five, and we would go to, uh, we'd go to garage sales, um, like flea markets or whatever, and my mom would give me a dime, and with a dime I could buy a game. But most often the game, the game wouldn't have all of its pieces, so I couldn't really play it. So I just got into the habit of not caring whether I could play the game that I was buying or not. I just wanted the pieces and I wanted the board. So I could flip the board over and make my own board and make my own rules with the pieces. And then uh, when I was 15, I got a job in the industry working at Surtex Software. Uh, and my job was, man, it was a dream job. It was an absolute dream job for any 15 year old. And what I did is I, uh, I played games and I memorized them. And then when people would call wanting to know how to get to the wizard on the 10th level, uh, I would tell them exactly how to do that. I had an advantage, I guess, in getting him when I was so young, in 81, right, that, that I, the industry and I, grew up together. And in any small company, you're gonna just do what needs to be done. And I was also fortunate that at Surtech, they were, they were comfortable letting me try a whole range of things. I feel as a game developer, I have an opportunity to do more than just entertain with games. Like some of the games that I've made are about really tragic events in history, and sort of call them documentary games. And if you 
when sometimes when people still hear that I've made games about these dark historical moments, they'll think like, you made a game about that? Like, how, like could you do that? But games, games are like any other form of media. In fact, I'd go so far as to say they are better than any other form of media, because not only can I tell you about the system, but I can let you experience complicity in the system. Games can be personally more effective because they can actually let you take part in these events. So you understand the systems, you understand the mechanics of however, whatever's happening, happened. I often get asked about being a woman in the industry. And I think in part that's just because there are a few of us. I mean, when I got into the industry, there were five women that I knew of. And so I've certainly seen the industry grow in terms of diversity over the last 36 years. I'm not trying to play games so that I can experience the same stuff I experience in my real life. But I want to play games to, like I want to see films, I want to watch TV shows that show me something new and something different. And to show me something new and something different, I need people who have seen and grown in something new and something different. And so that's why I'm always excited when new people come into the industry or, or when I hear about game development communities that, that you know, are, are just rising in specific places, right? Because I know it's going to give rise to new, cool, creative things. So the more voices and the more experiences that we have contributing to games that are being made, to me, the better. Like the Stevie Nicks of games, Brenda is a pioneer, a vibrant and vital presence with a truly impressive boot collection. An exceptional developer, teacher, Fulbright scholar and speaker, Brenda is constantly extolling the virtues of games as art, activism and ideology, and is a tireless advocate for diversity and creating more welcoming industry. Brenda challenges us to be not only better as developers, but better as people. It is my very great honour to present the BAFTA Special Award to Brenda Romero. I'm not gonna faint. Hi, I can't believe it's happening. It's still happening. Um, it took me 36 years to get here, so I have a list. Um, <laughs> but it starts, uh, well, it starts the same way you'd expect it starts. It starts with my mom, um, who got me Dungeons and Dragons, the original white box, which I still have, um, when I was 11 years old, even though there were demons in it and she was Catholic, I don't think she knew. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, have to thank, um, I have to thank BAFTA too, not just for this award, but like I remember when BAFTA started recognizing video games. And to me, that was the single most important move in our entire industry for recognizing us as an art form. Like I was alive when people asked, what game did they play before they did? I was alive? What? I meant I was in games, sorry. Well, sh wait, I wasn't dead in games. I'm just making this confusing, sorry. Um, but I mean, remembering people saying things that games were bad or that games were waste of time and instead BAFTA said, no, they're art and they deserve to be recognized. So thank you for that. Um, so I need to thank Gary Gygax, uh, Jeff Perrin for Chainmail and Dave Arneson, Gygax and, uh, uh, Gygax and Arneson for d and I have to thank Robert Woodhead and Andrew Greenberg and David Bradley for Wizardry, of course. Um, let's see, uh, oh, and one of my dearest friends uh, who was an advocate for me before I knew what I even wanted to do, David Jibo, um, who has memorized every Academy Award winner and I hope I can be an answer in his trivia game someday now. Um, I also have to say, like, being in the industry 36 years, you don't get here on your own. So for every team member I've worked with, I haven't always been great. I've had a lot to learn, and I learned from you, 
um, and that means everything. Um, also, the people who encouraged me to make those analog games, even though I thought it was very different at the time, uh, specifically Ian Schreiber and Steve Moretzky and John Sharp and Ian Bogost. Uh, I have to thank the University of Limerick that lets me teach, which I love to do, and also remain a practicing game developer. Oh, let's see, uh, to my team, uh, my current team at Romero Games, Keith and Ronan and Chris and Ian, Ian and yet another Ian. We don't need any more Ians. Um, and Darius, um, right now I'm making the game I've literally wanted to make since I was a kid. Uh, so I'm very excited. Um, I know my kids are watching at home. Uh, Lilia, Meza, Donovan and Avalon, they're afraid of what I'm gonna say. Um, but they're the absolute best people in my world, um, and we play games together, and we make games together, so thank you for understanding that games are life. Um, and last and most importantly, uh, John Romero, the absolute love of my life, my best friend. Um, you're the greatest thing ever. Um, if anybody can beat him in deathmatch, I'll pay you. Um, <laughs> that's not written down, I'm sorry. Um, uh, but it seems like a good platform to beg for it. Um, but thank you so much. My life is so incredibly wonderful with you. You're just a great man, and I love you very much. Um, and lastly, uh, to the game industry. Um, you have literally raised me from the time I was 15. I have played almost all of your games. I applauded my hands into pain tonight because I love the work that you've done. Um, so thank you for giving me a home, thank you for being my family, and thank you for raising me. Thank you. What's more for Brenda Romero? And that really is that we'll all remember tonight, the night that, you know, Naughty Boy opened that envelope in a way that nearly gave me a heart attack. We'll, we'll always remember Navid's snake joke. We'll always remember the, uh, the trained killers who won BAFTA after BAFTA, but never once, never once cracked a smile. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for the British Academy Games Awards. Thanks to our partners, EA, Games, Sega, Tencent Games and Ubisoft. A round of applause for all our nominees this evening. My name is Danny Wallace. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very, very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.